So we can um, we can go into some general questions. I'll just throw it out there, and if anyone wants to jump in uh, and answer it, or if you guys want to talk about it amongst yourself. Um, so the first one would be any recent games uh, you may have played, or any up and coming games that you want to play. Is there anything just generally talking about it that you know if you liked it, hated it, or something coming up that you might be interested in playing? Anybody? I'm thinking. Did the beta testing for Battlefront? Yeah, what'd you what'd you think about Battlefront? I was reluctant because I didn't think it would be that good. I hate FPS, and um, I think between the fact that you can change it to third person and Star Wars is is everywhere. You could actually be Darth Vader. Um, <laughs> It was awesome. You could actually drive the AT-AT and shoot people and they fucking blow up and go flying. It was really cool. I, I decided to pre-order when I wasn't going to, so Battlefront is awesome. What do you think about uh, recently, or anybody, for anybody, um, how, how has MMOs been in general? <coughs> has it been kind of lacking or, or is it looking good like it's going to be a good year? For MMOs. What else is out there, honestly, other than that one that you guys just put up? I keep wanting to say Divergence or something. Divergence. Yeah, I, I, I can't find that. any videos on that. <coughs> Take but that. It, Did you watch the original video that um, I Kel put up in mine? Oh, it's on. It's on. Shit, where did he put that? You're in the DC headquarters page, right? I'm on both of them, yeah. It's, I think it's in the DC headquarters page, right? I. Oh, shit. Did I post it? I posted on. on Fuck, I don't know. Look on DC's all their pages. It's somewhere in there. And if you watch the video, it'll tell you the link to go to either their other YouTube videos or their website where you can read about it. So is that upcoming? Yeah, it's uh, two guys are actually designing and, and coding this game. And they took Swig, copied it, and threw sci-fi, futuristic, not even APOC, it's so past that, um, like eight, six or eight different species. I mean, they threw in Mech Warrior. They threw in a copy of, um, and I'm trying to think of all the different species right now. But he's financially trying to get more backing because they can't create some of the, the different species they have without more money. So, <clears throat> but I mean, they literally made the guild halls from Swig and the city halls and the housing and the crafting is verbatim. The words, the the menus, everything, the housing... Uh, the the harvesters exactly the same. So can I can run into some sort of copyright BS. No, from I mean, Kel and I go back and forth on the difference <coughs> of what it exactly is. But from what I understand, SOE didn't have rights to the coding or something. So you can because Emu is totally free and clear to create an exact replica of Sway. And since they're not a um, a company that makes money off of Swig. It's an emu. It's free to play. They can't own anything copyrighted. So, yeah, I mean, they've tweaked it enough that if you go into a town hall, it's not the design and the layout is exactly the same. They've changed the colors. Is it like for copyright, they have like 30% different or something? No, I literally, from what I understand, the copyright doesn't really exist for anything. The code is free. They can, anybody can copy that code. Huh what I was told. I don't know exactly. But yeah, there I mean you're not gonna invest all this money and time because in his video where he explains what the game is, him and his partner that he's with have lost their marriages. They they have lost jobs. So now they're yeah. off you know, they they wouldn't do it if they knew as smart as he is, um, that there's a copyright issue. So Yeah, right now you can uh if you get to the link when you got it posted on our D C pages there. Um, you can actually download the game, register, and get in, but you can't really do anything other than look around. Uh, you would have to donate um, in their uh, their Indiegogo Kickstarter. You have to give them some money, and then uh, you'd be able to place things, stuff like that. But uh, I don't think there's any mobs or anything. But, but there's no it, minimum you have to donate, right? I think it's like a hundred bucks, something like that. I didn't I didn't look, but I tell you what, um, it looks it looks awesome in there, and the the sounds. Uh, are, are just like SWG and um, the uh, interfaces. You can push on some uh, panels and all that stuff comes up and it's it's a lot like uh, SWG it reminded me of. Total sandbox, open world. Hmm. So it's something to keep an eye on, that's for sure. I just, 
uh, like I was talking earlier to Lahira, um, two guys, you know, it's that's a lot of work for those guys. Um, hopefully they get some backing, maybe hire some more people to help them out. Well, this is their third round of um, financial backing thing that they're doing. So um, they said they did really well in the first two. So just, you know, kind of share it, get the word out there, and, and you're going to get a lot of old big vets that are interested in this because that's what it is. So what would you say, and this is everybody, uh, is your favorite all-time game and why? <laughs> Plague. Uh, checkers. For the obvious reasons, everything we talked about. Well, I mean, I couldn't even tell you what Swig is, what it's about, what kind of game it is. So I don't know much about that. So it's kind of interesting how diverse it is. Because I'm sitting here going, Sims! And you're <laughs> you're saying Swig, which are probably like the most opposite games ever. Yeah, this is very uh, player dependent. And, and it's a player economy, 100%. It's not credits. There was... Um, I mean, it just, I, you can't explain it. It was a very social, a very realistically social game. And those relied on those are honestly the types of games that I want to play. Astron's Call for me is how you describe this game. It was uh, so dependent on the people that you played with that is what made it good mm -hmm. in my in, in, in the definition of. Yep. Well, how many things can you get that far into that you sat there for hours and hours and hours on end and not realize you've been sitting there for 10 hours straight? Exactly, exactly. Every time you log on, there is 10 different choices of shit you can do. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of game that I think, you know, but it's a split because this, this era of gamers, I mean, a lot of them are these young kids that come in and they want to grind up in two days, they want to accomplish everything, get all the best shit, and, and jump into guilds that'll get them that, and then jump out, and then troll, and run around with their great gear, and then they get bored and leave the game. So um, then there's our generation that actually want to enjoy the game. They You want to have a guild that you can hang out with and socialize with. I mean, I don't log on to play by myself. So, Well, but, see, I think that's where, as far as my generation versus your generation comes into play, because I feel like I'm right in the middle of that. I enjoy the games that you can sit there and create those, uh, just create that community-based mm -hmm. era. But I also am the, am the type that I've jumped into games, jumped out, jumped in, jumped out. You know what I mean? In that, like, just getting out what I enjoy out of it. You know what I mean? So I can kind of, I have that mindset of <coughs> guild member, and I have that mindset of just playing by yourself, the lone person. You know what I mean? Yeah, and see that they need to create a game that actually you go in with the intent of getting what you want out of it, and you getting. I mean, that was everybody got into Squid, going, "Oh, I'm going to play Star Wars," and then all of a sudden you're in a guild, and there's people to fight constantly, and you have to show up to base defense, and everybody's fucking around the cantina, and you look forward to logging on and seeing everybody, and you can decorate your house and all this other gay shit that, no matter how much everybody made fun of, everybody enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And and it just became something. It was a, it was like a social dependency. I mean, you just really, yeah. really looked forward to getting on and being with everybody. It was it was a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's what will keep you coming back to a game that you think you're just going to play and be done with. Yeah. So, uh, and again to everybody, um, during your entire gaming life, have you ever witnessed a different attitude towards female gamers? <laughs> I, I, I think that's a resounding yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that they still to this day don't believe you're an actual female is kind of to our advantage anymore. But um, girls don't get on the interwebs. Yeah, but they're starting to understand. The problem is you have more guys because back in the day, hardly any guys played a female tune, and now. Guys are always playing chick tunes, mm -hmm. and so it's harder for them to figure out who are girls and who are guys. But um, once they find out, then they act the same way as they did before. Then they either just want to try and cyber with you, or um, they think you're stupid and you can't play. And then there's a select few that actually just uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Is that the cat? 
Yeah, she <laughs> hit my mic. Sorry. <laughs> She's like, what's this? Well, I, uh, I, and, and I know I've talked about this many, many times because uh, it's always kind of fascinated me. The, uh, the, the, I, I, I believe that humans, at least males, are somewhere back in their, their caveman brain want to protect females. That's, you know, that mm-hmm. seems to be a DNA thing. And so it always seemed to me that uh, if, a, if a girl showed up in, in, in game, that uh, guys were always more likely to help them out, to, to give them stuff, to help them, you know, level up or whatever the case may be. And I believe a lot of, a long time ago, um, guys would pick up on that. And so they would uh, become a female tune and, and do that just to scam other guys out of, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Out of stuff. Um, and then, of course, and of course, nowadays, um, like Law said that Lahira said that uh, you know a lot of people are playing female tunes, and that's because uh, a lot of guys say they if they're gonna have to look at something, they want to look at a, a female. At least that's the excuse that they give now. Except half of them don't know how to design a good book in female, anyways. It's like you, you want to stare at an ass, and that's what you made. <laughs> <laughs> have you, you guys ever have any um, any? any time in game where where I mean it was very obvious I, I mean you know it could be the the whole you know someone pestering you um, because you they know you're female or think you're a female or 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 something like that where where and you'd know it I guess you would know it if you saw it you know because the game plays a certain way and then all of a sudden you know somebody out of the blue starts paying more attention to you do, do you, is that i mean uh, is that something that, that that actually happens a lot back a, a while ago or is it or is it something that that um i just make up <laughs> no i think there's a lot of um see this can sound bad so i shouldn't say it i don't even understand what the question was i'm feeling dumb right now you feel that Guys, when they find out you're a female and you're a true female, that they pay a lot more attention to you. I mean, is, is that is that what the question was? Like, they pay more attention to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. I mean, from it's hard. I know, and this is where this is why this this podcast I think would be good to get the girls' point of view because um, you know, guys, we only see what guys see, and we only play as guys. You know, pretty one of one of many. There's a lot of different categories of guys that play games. There's the one that lives in mom's basement, whether he's 15 or he's 35, and he's a troll, literally. And um, he'll find maybe a, a female in game that likes him enough, that deals with him, and then he's nice to her, but he's an asshole, and he, he hates everybody, whether you're female or not. Then there's the guys that actually play, and they're kind of like that half nerd, where they, they game, but they still have like a social life, so they, they game when they're not out on the weekends. And those are usually the guys that are pretty cool to hang out with because they can accept you as a gamer or whatever. They just want to hang out with you. But they also have shit going on in real life that's important. And so they're not obsessed with you as a female gamer. They just think it's cool you game. <laughs> guys just want to cyber because I think it maybe ties in with the troll in the basement or they just can't get laid because they're really ugly. But they want to just – they don't want to know what you look like. They just want to cyber with you because um, that's all they can get, I'm assuming. And then there's the guys that think you're stupid because you're a girl and you can't play. I think I covered most of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and I guess with that said, then, um, has it gotten any better in recent years or is it worse? No, it's better. And anyone have an opinion on why that might be? I honestly think that a lot of the chicks that go that route, though, are the ones that are out there screaming, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, look at me, I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. And there's some of us that are like, I just want to play the damn game. Yes. And I'm not going to run around and scream, I'm a chick, give me stuff, or whatever. I never experienced that in my early gaming because I never run around screaming that. I'm just like, I'm playing my tune, go away, if you want to give me something cool, whatever. But it, I, I guess what, I wasn't one of the female beggars. I No, I, I can, I can uh, relate to that in the sense that I think I kind of lost my train of thought on that one, but it's more like, no, there it goes again. Go on, somebody else say something. <laughs> that and just for the record, that that's not 
um, that's not being a female there. That's being uh, related to wolf. <laughs> that's how wolf is. <laughs> Thank you. No, I totally lost it. I had like a whole train of thought, and then I got distracted. And it's funny. I had a, I had a follow up question. And I forgot it too. That's great. <laughs> Good job. Mm -hmm. No, I think guys treat girls a little bit better than they used to because they kind of all generally either want to cyber or think you're stupid. But um, now there are actually some that realize that girls can play, and then when they're smart enough to know they can play, they're like, "Hey, you now let's play." Then they just go with that. So. All it takes is a couple of times getting their ass whooped by a chick, and then they're okay with it. <laughs> do you do you girls feel um, would you would you play a game that only offered male avatars? No. Well, I wouldn't play Skyrim. Yes, I I mean I have, and I I will play them again because I don't think your avatar has anything to do with how you play the game. Um, in, in that sense. Uh, be it a guy when you're playing a female or a female when you're playing a guy, it it has to do. And I think this is the point where I lost my train of thought. And it's that interaction interaction after you figure out like, oh, you're actually a girl and not a nine year old boy playing this game. It's it's that relationship you build after after the fact that determines whether or not you're the troll asshole in uh, your mom's basement or a guy who's just playing the game. And I think that's that's the the relationship that i pay more attention to than just the the one offs or oh haha i'm going to chase you around h1z1 now and try and stab you in the back with a knife because i think it's funny and you're a girl and you can't do anything about it you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that that i think that was the point i was trying to make earlier as well i can see that it, yeah no i couldn't do that cuz yeah that's why i'm not playing that with you guys because i think i would road rage and find someone and yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm, I'm kind of with you on the same thing. Um, it's, it's Skyrim, I think it depends on the game, though, too. If you're running around as that's your little icon and you're interacting with other people, then, yeah, I might get a little pickier with male, female, what have you. But Skyrim, just running around, discovering new zones, puzzles, whatever, I kind of don't care. See, it's, I feel it's like a representation of me. When I'm creating character, I'm like, uh... I want to kind of throw shit out that's me. What what can I do? Because I'm looking at myself all the time, and so it's just kind of like me running around. And it's it's almost like that, like we talked before, where you immerse yourself in this fantasy of because nobody can actually live in Star Wars, which would be fucking amazing. And so <laughs> what what do yeah. I want to look like if I could live in this world? And that's the way I see it. So I want people to perceive me as who I am or who I want to be or who I want people to see me be. And so to me, it's a big deal. But running around as a big fat um, Viking is just not fun to me. <laughs> if, I know it sounds superficial. I just no. I, I what actually what, what's coming to mind is actually the difference between people who play in third person and the people who play in first person. Yes, exactly. I play I my games in first person, person, so it yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I was like the dude on Skyrim's a fat Viking. I never even looked at him. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember I was running around. I'm like, okay, first of all, this is a really slow storyline, and um, I'm a dude, so no. <laughs> After like an hour, I'm like, no. I really wanted to get into it. It looked great, but I couldn't do it. I just, um, I like to immerse myself, and not to the extent of role playing as much as if I really want to enjoy the game, I want to experience the game. So I want to create a tune that I like. Well, I can see your point of view on like, let's say my Sims obsession. If they were to say you could only play a male character on Sims, I'd be like, nope. Right. Because that to me is you're putting so much thought into your character, your family in that sense that I would just not be able to play that game because it didn't offer those options for me. So I can see both sides of those coins. Me too. So it's yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. No? I'm like, I don't care. If I enjoy the game, I don't care. Yeah. Although I didn't realize Skyrim was a big fat Viking guy. I just knew he was a guy. I don't remember. It was like a long time ago. As long as there's pets in the game, Cranberry will be a fucking... I was saying, no, Skyrim, yes. Skyrim, you could be a female. I'm a female in Skyrim. I couldn't get, maybe it was when it first came out. I couldn't be, or is it, no, because it was Hardware's copy, and I was just trying it out on his computer, so once you create a character, that's it, right? I you can't have multiple it, characters. On the single-player game? Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah, maybe yeah, that was Skyrim. It. And I was yeah. like, I'm running around. As, but I started the storyline from the beginning, so I don't know. I don't know. It was just... If you're playing his worth. character, yeah, you may have been stuck. Yeah. It's worth it, even if you're just going to run around as a guy and flow through all the little children really across the screen. It really is. It's an awesome game. <laughs> Skyrim is like a blend between Astron's Call and Sims for me, because the Skyrim world... Uh, offers you an uh, infinite number, well, I shouldn't say infinite, but very close to infinite number of storylines that you can take to get to where you're going, and it's just, you create your own story mm -hmm. in any sense, and it's it's almost like reading a book or, or creating your own movie, be it you're a female or male, and, you know, to, to it, go into that, that big Viking guy you're carrying around, it could be very much like one of those adventure books you get to create your own story, and, and dive into it, so. That's you can walk horses easy. up the side of a mountain. What, what was that? What? You can walk the horses up the side of the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just keep jumping. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, have, I have saved myself from falling down mountains because of my horses. So, yay. So, it, it sounds like um, games that you really enjoy, you... Um, You've invested yourself in that story, relate to the character. When um, when you create the characters, do you really like customization? And if you do, uh, do you try and make them look like yourself or do you try and make them look different? I think it depends on the game. Uh, to the level of story or like how I was explaining the difference between Skyrim and Sims. Like Sims for me is that as much detail as you can put in your character as possible. I mean, that's a representation of me. Um, where with Skyrim, it's more Skyrim is a story, and you get to uh, you get to choose the path of this character that's already set out for you. Where Sims is create a character and then play. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what uh, anyone, any of you girls or women, whatever you want to say. Do you, uh, do you take any offense to some of the um, Eastern market MMOs where they have uh, excess excessive boobs that uh, with uh, gravity and bouncing around that kind of thing? You ever see yeah, any of those I, games? I, I have big boobs, so it's nice to have that option. I'm not flat chested. I don't want to be in game. I'm sorry. What <laughs> <laughs> did you say? <laughs> I had to process that. I think I missed something there. I, to summarize, I think she said, I have big boobs, so it's nice to see my big boobs. <laughs> okay, I, th I did hear that and, right. And, <laughs> as somebody who has small boobs, it's nice to pretend I have big boobs. <laughs> so, no, I don't think there's any problem with <laughs> characters. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else you guys wanted to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> was that not the answer anybody was expecting? Boobs. <laughs> no, I think girls like boobs. Customization is very important because nothing sucks more than running into a city and seeing 12 other characters that look just like you. Yeah, yeah. And then you start to feel like all the characters are like, oh, this is kind of like fun for me, and now I see three of me standing around me. And it's like, I don't know, maybe it's a girl thing. I know that guys are, are um, bothered by that, too. You don't want to see people with the exact same armor and the exact mm -hmm. same body structure and the exact same hairstyle. And so the more um, the more detail there is to change, that was another thing about Swig. You could literally there was just this this diagram for every single detail, and you could change it so immensely that you could really. I mean, the armor was all the same. Everybody ran around in the same fucking armor, but your characters would be different, except for the hair. But all you the could girls, color the armor. You could color the armor. Yeah, you could color the armor, but everybody ran around in comp armor. The hairstyles. Females tend to stick to like two or three of the 12 to 15 there were. But that was, I mean, that was 10 years ago. I mean, the fact that they came out with, I mean, the one of the options of the long hair would, it would have a braid and it was all pulled back and then here's your back and the hair would stick out like this. And uh, so, I mean, the graphics were horrible, but not that bad. And so they've, they've come a long way. Although I play Swoter right now and Lana in Revan's Legacy, the expansion that came out a while ago she looked like a hot mess i don't know who the hell designed her or who's in charge of the female designing but she was horrible they cleaned her up for this new expansion that's out right now and then the sister of don't even ask me the names of the characters right now because i had wine 
but the sister of the bad guy is hard and shit. So they finally like hired people that knew how to design women. I don't know if they finally asked a chick, which would be the smartest way to go. But in Reef Pop, huh? Chick with the dots on her head. Yeah, the, the like metal or bone or whatever, the sister, yeah, yeah she's cool. I think a lot of it has to do with her personality too. But the Reef Pop has horrible female shit. And when we were trying to do alpha, and I think they finally switched over to beta, they still have nothing. I mean, I look like Ronda Rousey on steroids on a bad day. And so it's just not feminine. And you want to be able to choose to be feminine if you want to be. And so, I, I, you know, we're supposed to report all the issues. And it was like, can you just fucking come up with better female options, customization? There's a lot more female gamers now, and we, we do care different degrees of caring, but we all do care about what we look like. I think that goes for male and female because um, just watching H1Z1 progress in the way it has, it's um, it went uh, male character, um, more skins for male character, and then uh, more skins for the male zombie character, and now they finally brought in female and now they're offering more skins for both. So it's interesting to see that not only did um, the different skin tones or whatever to make you look different um, for male came into play before even just male versus female. Mm -hmm. Wait, you can play a zombie? Uh, I haven't played in a while, but I think, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Cran, I thought you guys were coming back to Swoter for the expansion. I, I was playing it the other day. But you know I'm getting ready for the party and stuff. I've got my BB-8 upstairs I'm making. You should show us some of your shit. I will show that one when he's done. Mm -hmm. He's for a contest. Yeah, I, was playing, I was playing the the beginning of it. I'm still in like that chapter. I don't get it though with that, that one game, um, the new expansion on there. You're in the middle of a chapter, but I ran across other players that were PvP enabled. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought I was in a chapter. No, so there, it like it's like your area for your um, storyline, and then you'll have like open areas where you can PvP, and then you go back into your storyline. Oh. So yeah, if you see a red dot, that's uh, they did that the last expansion, and they've done that with a couple of the events. Like I think Ragul was like that, the Ragul event, and. Um, the Gree event where they force us to, to world PvP, which I don't mind. I just, I don't like to be like, hey, here's the area, and if you want world PvP, it's right here. So you guys come here as a group. Instead of us teaming up and going and finding people, which I'd rather do, but at least there's something. I haven't right. do it for a while. Unless you happen to be me walking into a group of five red dots and not realizing what's going on. But, hey, guys, why are you all red? What's up? Oh, yeah, that was fun. All right, anything else you guys want to talk about before we close it on out? Not that I can think of. Okay. All right, thanks, girls.